Y'all hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Y'all, I am finally going to do it. I'm going to sit down and go over sort of a deep dive into the book's Palma. So we talked about this when I first got it. We did an unboxing. We did sort of a shallow dive because I didn't really know a whole lot about it then. So I did kind of a first impression. Well, we're going to do an actual deep dive like real impression today. So I tell you what, I'm going to get us set up on another camera so you can see what I'm talking about. While I do that, y'all go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I'll be back in a minute and we'll talk about this thing. All right, y'all. So as usual, I have notes and I kind of have a plan for what I want to talk about in the order in which I want to talk about things. And I'm going to try to stick to my plan. We'll see how it goes, but I'm going to already start off out of order because I want to start off talking about the size because I want to show you the comparison between the book's Palma, which is this, the Super Note Nomad, which is this, and the Super Note A5X, which is this little lovely thing. So these are all e-ink tablets. These two are more sort of designated note-taking tablets as you can read on. We're not going to get anywhere near into that, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea. So this is an A6X. It's kind of the one that I refer to as being like a steno notebook size. This is the one that's the like a regular notebook paper size or printer paper size, I guess. So look at the Palma up next to that. And then, of course, we can look at it compared to a, an iPhone. This is the iPhone 15, I think, and I have actual specs, but I feel like sometimes it's nice to just get a visual of the size comparison. So there it is next to the phone. All right, let's get into this. So as you probably already know, the Books Palma is an e-ink tablet that runs the Android operating system and it runs it natively. So you don't have to like sideload it or do anything sketch. It just runs Android, just it's, it's an Android tablet. So it's an e-ink tablet that runs Android and it does a bunch of different things, but what it does really well, y'all, is it is an e-reader. So let's talk about sort of the specs of the thing. Let's talk about what you can do with it. Let's talk about a couple of things that it doesn't do, but then let's talk about reading on it and how it does that really, really well. So let's jump straight in. Let me wake this thing up and talk about, first of all, because I always forget to talk about this, let me tell you the price. So I bought this probably six months ago now, and it was $304 American out the door, like into my house. And I got the tablet or the, like the Palma thing and a case to go with it. So I think it was like some kind of deal, but it was maybe $279.99 plus, I live in Minnesota where we pay all the taxes. So it was $279 plus tax. So it was like $304.84, like out the door. So that's the price of the thing. Cause like I said, I always forget to tell that. And then like when I'm editing, I'm like, well, I forgot to tell the price. So 300, essentially $305. We've already looked at the size, but let's talk about the spec, like the actual size specs. So it weighs 169 grams, which meant nothing to me until I weighed a uh, Kindle Paperwhite, which is the other sort of tablet type thing that I hold. Cause this, when you're reading, you want to hold it, right? Like if you're laying in the bed or sitting on the couch, petting a dog or something, you want to hold it in your hand. So you want to know how much it weighs. So. This is 169 grams. The paper white, just the plain old paper white, no case, no nothing, is 211 grams. And a plain, like a regular run of the mill, sort of like bar shaped phone is around 218 grams. So it's a little lighter than the paper white and a phone, but not significantly so, but it is a little bit lighter. It's 6.1, 6.13 inches. And y'all check this out. I took it, I keep mine in a case cause y'all know I'm a little bit psycho about cases, but can you see the back? It's got this, listen, listen, wait. Can you hear that scritching? It's got a texturized back that's almost like a spray in bed liner of a truck or something. And it gives you just a little bit of grip, like not enough that you're like, why is that sticking to my fingers? but just enough that it gives you something to hold on to. And obviously mine is white, but you can see that 
you're not, I'm not picking up any fingerprints, which is really nice. So it's a very nice form factor. Like I said, it's light, but it doesn't feel chintzy. It like, you feel like you're actually holding something in your hand. So that's really nice. The, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it, but the screen is recessed just a little bit around the edges. And the, it's your standard 300 PPI screen. The resolution is 824 by 1648. And let's, while we're talking about that, let's just go ahead and talk about the form factor of the thing. So it's got one, what they call the function button on the left side, and then it's got rocker buttons on the right. So sort of like your up and down volume button, your power button is also on the right. And it's got a, Y'all, if I ever say SIM card, that is not what I mean. This is a micro mini SD card. It is not a SIM card. This is not a phone. So you cannot put a SIM card in it and make it into a phone. So if I inadvertently say SIM card at any point, I'm doing a disclaimer right now. If I inadvertently say SIM card at any point during this thing, that is not what I mean. I mean the, um, the micro mini memory card thing. So it's got a slot for that. You've got a light sensor here and a speaker. And there's a microphone down here and then like a little hole for, there's only one speaker in the thing, but you have like a little hole for the speaker down here and then the like speaker hole up at the top. Of course it's USB-C, did y'all see that on the bottom? Of course it's USB-C, so there's your little USB-C hole, which I believe if you have USB-C headphones, you can plug those in, but of course it has Bluetooth, so I mean, hello boomer, just use your Bluetooth headphones. But if you have like plug-in USB-C headphones that you like for whatever reason, and I say that, I use like wired headphones when I teach, so I'm really just making fun of myself. But it is my understanding that you can plug in USB-C headphones into the USB-C hole, but that's also for charging. And you can plug it into your computer and transfer stuff to it using that. So that's pretty slick. I think you can see, let me turn, I feel like my light is cranked way up on this thing. Let me turn that down. Cause I feel like it's just, you're just getting an awful view of it. I'm gonna turn y'all, I feel like. So let me go ahead and tell y'all, my leg is hurting. So I have it propped up on the chair. So if you're looking at me like, why is she squatted down so far? That's why, there we go. Y'all are just gonna have to acknowledge the fact that the camera that you're looking at the thing on is right here. So now that I turned the light down, I don't know if you can see it, but the light, it's, the light on this thing is really nice. Like it's very evenly distributed. Can you see like it's not, the light isn't splotchy like it is on some, on some e-readers. So that's nice. So let's talk about, oh, and it's got a camera. Did we talk about that? It has a camera and a flash for the camera. That's on the back. Does not, I don't believe it has a native camera app. I downloaded a camera app because if it does have one, I couldn't find it. So I just like downloaded a freebie camera app. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, the camera is 16 megapixels and it works pretty well as a camera, but it's really intended for scanning documents. And there is a native document scanning app that comes with it. So you can use it to scan documents, which again is really what the camera is meant for. So, but we'll talk about taking pictures when we get into all the gubbins of the thing. There is no cellular, like you can't do cellular at all. It's not a phone. It's not, you can't do cellular data on it. So it's got to do, you have to do Wi-Fi. So you just get on a Wi-Fi network if you need to actually like access the interwebs. We talked about the buttons. I don't think you would be able to hear them click, but they have a nice little like satisfying click to them. And we'll talk about navigating the thing, but it has a function button over here and you can map that to do different things. There's a single click, which I have mine. Well, hang on, let's get into something. So I have mine set for my single click to go to home. And then you can do a double click, which is a screen refresh. So you can see it just refreshed my screen. and. I'm not sure what my three clicks does. Oh, nothing. My three clicks just goes back to home. So that function button, you can track it. You can map it to do three different things. And then your rocker button, 
you can track to do different things too, and you can set them to do different things in different apps. So that's really nice. And it'll remember your settings for your different apps. So I keep saying we'll get into that when we get there. We'll get into that when we get there, but that we're already there. So yeah, so it's really nice. Like for the Barnes and Noble app, say I want my Barnes and Noble app to have a different refresh rate than my Kindle app, or I want my Barnes and Noble app, I want the rocker buttons to be volume, but on my Kindle app, I want them to turn pages. I can do all of that and it'll remember that and it'll remember the different settings for the different apps. So it can be a little cumbersome at first when you're first setting the whole thing up, like it can be a little overwhelming, but then once you get it set up, if you're in an app and you wanna change something, once you have it all set up, you really just need to tweak things when you come up with different things, like things that you wanna change. So that's pretty cool. So um, the ca we talked about the camera, There's only there is no front facing camera because again, it's really meant for scanning documents. The battery life on it's pretty good. Obviously, like I had my light cranked up pretty high, so obviously like if you run the light higher, it's gonna run your battery down. If you run like all the standard things, if you run apps that play videos or with like a lot of graphic changes, that's gonna run your battery down. Or I think probably if you listen to audio, like if you listen to audio books on it a lot or listen to audio while you're reading your like, like, gra like word books, um, I don't even know how to say that. Like if you're reading a book and you're listening to the audio at the same time, I think playing the audio is gonna run your battery down more. But if all you do, like pretty much all I do on this thing is read. So my battery will last for a while and then I just plug it in when I think about it. And it's all good. So let's get into what I think it does really well. So the user interface is very much the same as other books devices. I think we talked about the Note Air 3C, which is a books device. So many of the things we talked about on there, like I have it on here, like the books drop, how you can get documents from other places onto your books devices. This has that availability and the push one. Yeah, the push read is on here. So ways to get documents or articles or things on here to read later. Those are all available like your standard books device. You swipe down from the top to get to your control center. Here's your e-ink center, auto rotate, which you can turn off and on here. All your standard stuff, it's got screencast. You can, from here, you can send feedback directly to uh, books. You can do a screen recording here, which this is pretty cool, y'all. The You can see here, I can start it here, which I'm not going to. So let's get out of that and get back in here. But there, are, we'll go into the settings in a few minutes, but there are a lot of sort of small settings that you can change in your screen recording to sort of tweak how you do your screen recording, which is pretty cool. You can do screenshots from here, the flashlight. Can y'all see that coming on? You have a flashlight because of course you have the flash package for the camera. Um, and it, you see there, I just kind of swiped to the next page. There's books drop. I can turn books drop off and on here. Here's the Navi ball. You can enable or disable the Navi ball and you can edit this to have like all of these or none of these or change the order they're in or put the ones that you really want on the front page. I haven't tweaked it much. Mine is just sort of the way that it is, like how it came. Here are the lights, which I think I have later in my notes to talk about this, but while we're here, the color temperature is here, so I hope y'all can see this. Can you see how orange it's getting? Like how warm you can make it? Or that's, here, let me turn it, there we go, turn it up. And then now you can see how orange it is. So you can make it like super, super warm. Or leave it not as warm because that makes my teeth itch. But yeah, so you can, control your um, brightness and your color temperature in here. So that's in your control center. Let's go back to home from here. Let's talk about navigating around this thing. So see down here at the bottom, I have like icons where I can navigate to different things. Well, you have the option, I'm gonna just go ahead and go into settings right now, cause I wanna show you See here, system navigation. There are, na so we talked about this on the other books device. This is standard in books devices. I think like all the ones that I have do this, 
but you can use gestures and these are pretty cool. So there's, there are swipe up gestures from the bottom and there are three different places you can swipe. Can y'all see here? So it's the far left, so you can make that one thing. So let's say you wanna make that refresh. So if you swipe up on the far left, it'll refresh. Swipe up on the middle, make it go back to home, right? So you can swipe up on the middle and go home. And then swipe up all the way on the left and here are all the options of things that you can do from those different spots. So let's say you wanna make swipe up from the far right to put the thing to sleep. So you can do that. You can also do, there are swipe in from the side gestures. So you can do that. I like the navigation bar at the bottom and I will show you why. So here are the side gestures too. Like there's a, you can swipe up and down, which I do have my volume turned on. So I can swipe up and down on the side and do volume, but you can swipe in from the sides and customize those gestures as well. But I like the navi bar at the bottom because See this right here? This gives me quick access to all of my app configurations. So if I'm in an app and I wanna change, say it's refresh mode, this is one of the nicest things about this tablet is I can have different apps refresh at different rates. So like when I'm reading a book, like if I'm sitting on the couch reading a Kindle book, I don't need it to be refreshing all, like all the, all the time. And especially because I don't tend to read comic books like anime or M manga, manga, or any of those. I just read like black letters on white backgrounds. So it doesn't really need to refresh. I just need to turn the pages. So I have it on the slower refresh rate, which saves my battery. But if you are reading a book with a lot of graphics in it, or like for heaven's sake, if you're doing anything with video, you want an ultra fast refresh rate. Well, you can change each of these from inside the app and you can do it on the fly just with this little control right here. So I really like having access to that within the apps all the time. So because of that, I keep that instead of, plus y'all, I like, you know, like I read on different <laughs> devices often. So I forget like which swipe is which, and this is actual little pictures of the things. So I don't have to like try to remember, well, what does this do or what does that do? the buttons show me what they do. So that's navigation on the thing, but it's super customizable, which I think is very cool. And so are the buttons. I showed you the function button over here. You can set that to do three different things. And the rocker buttons as well, you can set to do different things within the app. So you can really customize your experience when you're reading or like say you like, which again, I don't do anything on here except really read, but like say you're a New York Times crossword puzzle person and you wanna do the New York Times crossword puzzle on here. You can set that, you can you know change the keyboard on it to make it a keyboard that's easier for you to type on for when you're doing your crossword puzzles. You can have your refresh rate the way that you need it to refresh so that you don't see ghosting on your crossword puzzles or whatever. It's really cool how easy it is to customize it and how custom you can make your experience. All right, while we're in here, let's talk about refresh modes for a minute. So I, I alluded to this. So here are the, the ways that you set how often the thing refreshes and you can do, so HD is gonna be like the crispest looking picture, but ultra fast is gonna have the fastest refresh mode. And y'all, this ultra fast refresh mode it's a really fast refresh mode for a, especially for an e-ink tablet. Like, I don't know that there is one on the market that's fast. Sorry, I keep reaching across it to hit my home key. But so let's go into Barnes & Noble. They usually have a bunch of flashy stuff and see how quickly, where's my app? There it is. See how quickly, look how fast that loads. I thought they would have a, Sometimes they have some kind of app that plays or, or some kind of video that plays, which they don't right now, of course. But all right, now I feel like I'm slouching. Hang on, there we go. But yeah, so that's ultra fast mode. So you can decide and adjust your setting between like very crisp, clean appearance or ultra fast appearance and like whatever in between. So that's that.
whilst we're talking about settings, let's, I alluded, and we kind of jumped in here for a minute. Let's go back into this settings wheel up here in the control center and look at some stuff in here. So here's kind of just the standard, like, you know, your power, your storage, all those things. Navigation, we talked about that. Let's go into more settings. And there's lots of things in here. So you can set how you want your volume buttons to react. So this is up and down or down and up, whichever way you want them to go. And there's a long press on the volume buttons and you can set how long you want your long press to be. So do you wanna hold it down for half a second, a second, a second and a half or two seconds for your long press to start? Y'all, that's pretty custom right there. So you can change those things in here. You can adjust your function key, how you want it to do for your short press, your double click and your long press functions. You can set all those in here. Oh, here's the screenshot thing. I just think this is cool that, so I didn't even talk about this. You can swipe down with three fingers to take a screenshot, but you can also use buttons to take a screenshot. And you can customize your screen recordings. So the resolution of your screen recording, the quality, the orientation, like if you want it to, to just automatically orient to how you're holding the thing, or if you want to set it for portrait or landscape, you can do that in here. So I just think those are some pretty cool little details. Here's the Navi ball, which we'll talk about that. Y'all, I love me some Navi balls. Matter of fact, let's get out of here. So that's more settings that you can set in there. I know, I know, I said I wasn't gonna get all up into the things that all books tablets have, but I love me some Navi Ball. So this is kind of like your navigation thing across the bottom, but this is in all of your apps everywhere you go. And you can customize what you want. So when you hit it, you get these controls that pop up and you can set them to be what you want them to, I mean, within reason. You can't set them to like take over the world or something, but you can set them to be what you want them to be. Or, you know, customize them, as some people would say. So like I have mine, my first one goes to, well, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but there are eight buttons and you can set your buttons to do different things that you feel like you're gonna wanna do from within apps that you're not gonna wanna like get out and go mess around and do. For instance, if you read a lot of, y'all don't know if it's manga or manga, but if you read a lot of that or graphic novels, th things that are like graphics heavy, you're gonna wanna be able to get to full refresh easily because you're gonna get ghosting. It's just the nature of the beast. So even though I don't do that, I like to have my like full refresh available very easily. So I have that set to one of my Navi ball buttons. But so anything that you wanna be able to do quickly, you stick on your Navi ball and look, it pops up. Wherever I am and look, I can just refresh from there. So that's really cool. I love me some Navi ball and you can move it around. So like, if I'm like, I'm trying to read, get out my way. I can just move my Navi ball. So, and it's kind of fun to say Navi ball, try it. All right. So that's that. I told you about the rocker buttons. Um, Google play store, you know that we're running Android, so we can run all the apps, any of the apps that we want to run. And y'all, it's just straight up Google Play Store. I think there's another way to get apps on here, but why would you? So you can just go into the Google Play Store and just download the things. Now, you can get apps that run video. Like I've tried to run the YouTubes on here just for fun, just to see if it would work. And it does work. It's not nice. It is not a nice experience, but say you're oot in a boot and you've uploaded a video and somebody's like, Hey, why is your video running backwards or something? And you're like, is that a me issue or a you issue? You can, and you're like reading on your palma, you can 
bust it out and play your video and see if it's a you issue or a them issue and if it's really playing backwards. So, and you actually, like you can watch videos on it, just like if there are other options, you're gonna wanna go with the other options, but it is workable. So, but yeah, so Google Play Store is where I get all my apps. All right, I'm done dancing and playing with this thing. Y'all, let's talk about reading some books. To me, the absolute beauty of this thing, again, I've said it nine times, it's an Android device. It runs the Google Play Store, which means you can have all of the apps. So you can have your Libby app, you can have your Barnes & Noble Nook app, you can have your Kobo app, you can have your, I almost said Audible app, that's not the one. You can also download Audible things on here because it's got a speaker and it's got Bluetooth. You can have your Kindle. So. I've opened Kindle like five times on here already, but let's jump into my library and let's look at some Good Girl's Guide to Mer No, you know what? Yeah, I think, no, let's do, hang on, hang on, because I know what I want to do and I'm hoping it's going to work. Let's do, let's get out of there. And y'all, it works just like a regular Kindle. I know y'all are yelling, just hit the back, hit the back. You're hitting the wrong things. I know it's because I've gotten myself a little flustered. But here's why, because I know that I've downloaded the Audible version of this book on here as well. So y'all, I'm going to catch a copyright strike for this, big as day. So if there's a blank here, it's because, maybe I'll just talk over it and hopefully y'all can still hear it. The man she'd once looked to as an almost father. But then Pip had lied too, hadn't she? And she could tell herself she'd done it to protect the people she loved. So I hope you get to hear a little bit of that. The speaker is good, the, it's crisp, and it doesn't do, at least I don't think it does. I don't, I don't use it for this, so I haven't really messed with it. I don't think it does immersive reading like the um, fires will do where you can listen to the audible and it'll highlight the words while it's reading, but it will keep up and it'll like, It'll, like when the page, when the words change to the next page, the page will turn. So that's pretty cool. So like I said, you can set your rocker buttons to be page turn buttons and look, I'm gonna turn the refresh mode back to HD. Look how crisp that looks. And it's still pretty snappy and y'all watch me be bougie. Look, not touching, now watch my page turns. I know, right? But look how smooth it is. Look at me just sitting here turning pages, not even touching nothing. I know. I know it's a lot. That's all right. That's all right. So anyway, with the rocker button set as your page turn buttons, you can still interact with the screen. Look, I can still pinch to zoom. I can still highlight. I can still add notes. I can still do all the normal things that I can do when I'm reading on a Kindle. So that is so big, y'all, I can't. It's making my teeth itch. So let me show you one other thing. Now, I told you I don't read manga, I don't read graphic novels, but I did download this one because I've had questions and I didn't know answers. So look at even so if you're looking for a device on which to read manga or comic, graphic novels, whatever they are, and y'all, I, I don't really know the difference between manga and a graphic novel. I don't know if it, I don't know. I don't know. But there are some things about this that I think does graphic novels nicely or comic books, whatever, nicely. Like you can see here, hang on, let me get out of this. Not into that. You can see like, here's the page of the book. It's got like all of the little panels on it. But if I click on it, it takes me into this reading mode where it'll go through one panel at a time so you can actually read it and you can zoom in and out. Like, let's find something to zoom on, hang on. 
And look, when you zoom in, look at the detail. Like it's not getting grainy or anything. And then I'm going to refresh just for fun. But so I feel like it does that pretty well. But I think there are probably other devices that do this better, especially for manga, just because like manga books are just bigger and the dimensions are different. So does it do it? Yes. Is it the best option, especially if you're like, if you... I don't want to keep saying manga because I feel like it's manga and I'm saying it wrong and I don't know. But if that's your reading orientation, that maybe there are devices that are better for that. But if you just maybe like when a new book comes out and you're like, oh, I want to grab that one. And it's not what you normally read. I would highly recommend. I, Y'all, I love reading on this thing. It will do PDFs, but it does not do them well. Because it's just so small, it's cumbersome to navigate around a PDF. So I would say for PDFs, my answer to can you do PDFs on it is the same thing as can you watch a video? Yes, but yes with a big old caveat. And that caveat being it is functional, but it is not nice. So like if I'm oot in a boot and I need to check something on a video, I grab my phone. I do not grab my palm. Even if like I'm sitting in the car at the Walmart waiting for my order and I'm like reading on my palm and I need to check something on a video, I don't like I pull out my phone and check it on my phone. I don't check it on my palm because it just it's not it's just not nice. For web browsing, it's actually not awful. I'm going to go back to here and let's just Google something up and see what we get. Let's Google UGA football. Go dogs. Let's see what we get. Oh, look, Georgia beat Clemson 34 to 3. I know. Act like you've been there before. So, sorry. So the... Um, It'll switch. That actually wasn't very good because we're not getting a whole lot of videos in this one. Let's do dog because my dog is yapping. I might have to go in a second and see to that yappy dog. I'm actually going to wrap this up in a second so y'all don't have to listen to my dog's yap. But you can see it'll go into and out of HD like as you're scrolling it goes out and then when you stop scrolling, it kind of like focuses back into HD, which is nice. And then facts about dogs, what you need to know. <laughs> what I need to know is that little furry fellow probably needs to go outside. So the web browsers are definitely workable. And especially like even if, let's see if there's a video, hang on. Look at those sweet faces. There's videos. So you can see there, can y'all see it playing that video? I don't know what this person is doing. And I'm not trying to steal someone else's intellectual property, so let me get out of there. But you can see, obviously it's black and white, right? Because it is a, well, black and grayscale tablet. But it played the video just fine, and it will. So. So the web browser is, is good. The YouTube is functional. It is not a phone and y'all, it does not have any kind of stylus. It doesn't recognize a stylus. You can't use a stylus on it at all. So that's a bit disappointing. Now at the $300 price point, it, I love it. I absolutely adore it. That's why it took me six months to make a video about it because I'll be sitting on the couch reading like, oh, I need to go make some notes on this to make a video. Oh, I'm just going to read a little more and then never get off the couch to make the notes to make the video because I'm too busy reading on it because I love it so much. But there is truly nothing unique about this tablet. Like there's nothing about this book's tablet that the other book's tablets don't have other than the form factor, other than the size. So if you're looking for a teeny tiny little like truly pocketable e-ink tablet, it is fantastic. I think it's a, especially like if you travel, like if you're a commuter and you don't wanna be toting around a, like a Kindle Paperwhite or a Kobo or, you know, it's one of those, I mean, even just like a little bit bigger than this, it's not going to fit in your pocket, right? Like I couldn't fit a Paperwhite in my pocket any more than the man in the moon, but I can slide this into my pocket 
So if you're looking for a, you know, sort of like a companion e-reader device that'll go easily with your phone into a pocket, into the inside pocket of a jacket or something, this is a fantastic device, I think. I love the way that it works. I have n I've had no complaints whatsoever about the functioning of the tablet. You can make a cute little um, completely unnecessary, but cute as it can be, page turn remote to go with it. So I love all of those things about it, but I don't think that it brings anything new to the table other than the size. So love the size, that's what I was looking for. Somebody pointed out in my comments that the perfect use case is to sit on the couch snuggling a dog and reading one-handed 100%. So I do love mine, I regret absolutely nothing about it, but if you're looking for a unique, reading tablet or a reading tablet that brings something innovative to the table, this is not it. But if you are looking for a small compact tablet that might be great for you on the go, maybe this is the one. So y'all let us know in the comments, do you read on an e-ink device? If so, which one do you have? Do you have any questions about this? I know there's all kinds of stuff I left off because there's so much to talk about. So if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we are most definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos at the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.